may I have your opinion, Professor Ziba Kalam, about the latest news that the Russian plane apparently was shot down by terror, terror attack. And what do you make of the series of terrorist events over the past few weeks? Down of the Russian plane, terrorist attacks in Lebanon, terrorist attacks in Paris. What is going on here from your Muslim perspective? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I must say that uh, the world is uh, confronting uh, with an international uh, crisis because I think uh, we can no longer uh, speak of terrorism um, confined only to the Middle East. It appears that uh, um, the terrorists uh, are actually uh, striking uh, from um, Egypt in uh, Sinai Desert, a very sophisticated operation, to Paris, heart of the Europe, again, very sophisticated operation, to uh, south of Beirut and uh, Hezbollah stronghold. Again, given the fact that uh, it was a very stronghold for Hezbollah, the operation in, in Beirut, in Lebanon, too has been very sophisticated mm. so it appears that we are confronting um, with a with a new phenomenon it is uh, it is striking uh, wherever it, it it desires it is uh, very sophisticated it it uses manipulated uh, latest uh, uh, te 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 technology mm. uh, so i think uh, we have to consider it uh, from an uh, international uh, perspective. All right. Uh, Mr. Rasdam joining us from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. All of these events have yes. apparently been claimed the responsibility by ISIS. What do you make of the widespread and also the sudden rise over the past two years of this terrorist organization? What is its root cause, do you believe, sir? Well, obviously, uh, as uh, my colleague over there has said, uh, this is uh, a, new, a new phenomenon. This is uh, something that uh, needs to be confronted by the whole international community, not just uh, by a few countries. Now, uh, I think... Uh, it boils down to looking at the root causes of, of this and, of course, and finding uh, uh, the right solutions uh, to the problem. Now, uh, this uh, organization or this group of people, uh, I, I don't think we can really call it an organization because uh, in some instances, uh, their influence uh, is not through uh, uh, an organized uh, structure but through uh, uh, getting people to agree to their ideology and their ways of doing things uh, through the social media. And this is what is happening in the case of Southeast Asia, for example. Mm. If I could just follow up on what you said, Mr. Rastam, what do you make then, if not this organization, yes. of the rise of this extremist ideology, as some suggested, in some at least the corners of the Muslim world. Sorry, I the rise of these extreme the, uh, the rise of the rise of these extremist ideologies, as some suggested, in at least some sporadic corners of the Muslim world. What do you make of the reasoning behind this? No. No. Um, Obviously, it, uh, there are a number of reasons here. One is uh, because of violence that had been uh, uh, occurring in uh, parts of the world, and in particular in the, in the Middle East. And uh, as we know, this has been going on for, for years, uh, uh, beginning with the, uh, with the uh, 
uh, international action or, or invasion of Iraq. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, if you go back uh, to earlier times, uh, uh, it has got to do also with the occupation of the Palestinian territories. But I think uh, over the years, there's also a question of, uh, of uh, Islam being misunderstood uh, by people, both uh, Muslims as well as non-Muslims. Uh, the Muslims, of course, uh, uh, who are involved in these terrorist activities uh, are using the religion for their own purposes, uh, which, which should not be the case because the, the majority of Muslims don't subscribe to whatever they are they're doing or whatever they're, they're propagating. Mm. Follow up on that, Ms. Professor Ziba Kalam, if I could come back to you. You have heard that your Malaysian colleague said, then what is the nature that we are seeing here today? Of course, people brush it off uh, by Mr. Huntington's the theory of so-called the clash of civilization. But many wonder, is it about that category between the Muslim world and the rest of the world? Is it fair? Or is it the extremists in the Muslim world vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the Muslim world that we are seeing right now? And the latter fight could be even more fierceful. Uh, I Let me ask the Professor Ziba Kalam and then I come back to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, obviously your question is um, a very important uh, question. Uh, why are we, why all the terrorists are coming uh, from the Muslim world? What is happening? And I think by simply saying that Islam has been misunderstood by the Western or Islam has been misunderstood by the terrorists. Uh, the, these answers are, are not, uh, are not uh, convincing. They are in, uh, inadequate. What, what, what we should do so that Islam is understood properly. I think um, one of the reasons, uh, first of all, I think the issue, the phenomenon is very complicated. Mm. And by saying that Islam, is mis Islam hasn't been misunderstood uh, properly or the West uh, must be blamed or, uh, or, or the invasion of Iraq or, uh, or the creation of a state of Israel, I think, I think the, 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 these are not the proper uh, What is it uh, then? Proper what answer. is it then? I believe that uh, Islamic countries... I, I believe that Islamic countries, most of them, many of them, are suffering due to lack of uh, political development. If you can't, perhaps there are, there are only a tiny uh, um, Islamic state who enjoyed some degree of uh, uh, political development. Malaysia, Turkey, to some extent Iran, um, these are about the only countries that, that, that uh, there have been um, some, um, um, uh, some political development. The rest of the Islamic states, the uh, Muslim countries, uh, Arabs and non-Arabs, they are suffering at the hand of the Arab dictators, despot, a ruthless king, ruthless regime. Wow. And I think that is driving the youth and, and the modern generation towards, uh, towards radical uh, uh, action and, and radical uh, approach. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Rastam, could we just uh, simplify it as a political development? Is it as simple as that, Mr. Rastam, from your perspective? No. No, I wouldn't agree with that because uh, if you use that argument, then uh, what about those people who are influenced by the ISIL ideology in Malaysia, in Indonesia, for example? Mm. Uh, you know, the professor has said that uh, Malaysia enjoys a high level of political development compared to some other states. Uh, yes, uh, some of these are rooted in uh, in uh, grievances over politics, over the economy, and, and things like that. But uh, at the same time, you know, uh, these groups of people, uh, some some of them, uh, 
there are professors, for example, uh, in Malaysia who have got themselves involved in terrorist activities. Mm. Uh, one of them was uh, eventually killed uh, by the Indonesian uh, police uh, some years back. Very interesting debate going on to see between the two of you, professors. Let me come back to you, uh, Ms. He. <laughs> of course, uh, you are not coming from the Chinese Muslim community, but mm. you're traveling and doing research about the Middle East and the Northern African countries. And you've also been traveling very frequently to the uh, Muslim uh, uh, provinces and, and, and cities in China. What do you make of what the two other gentlemen just argued or debated about? Uh, well, I agree uh, some of the points uh, put forward by both uh, professors. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, uh, the reason for why people find why the uh, Muslim people now they have uh, some relevant with those terror attack, I think uh, we cannot only understand this saying, okay, this religion has been misunderstood uh, by West. I think uh, we also need to find why this religion has been misunderstood. There is something I think Muslim people themselves also need to have, uh, you know, to ask themselves how to uh, develop this religion in a modern society. Mm. So to develop it with the time change. So because it, the religion itself now has, it seems to me, it has been divided into different groups. Some are tend themselves now becoming very radical and some are very moderate and then some like even professors. So it has nothing to do saying with your economic level. Yeah, it's not saying only the poor I people see. will turn themselves into radical. Maybe majority of the poor people, it's easy to turn themselves into radical. What but you also have just raised is a very interesting mm -hmm. question. Let me come back to the two uh, men of wisdom over there, one from Malaysia and one from Iran. Uh, what do you make of the evolution of your religion and its impact on the social and political changes in your individual societies and how should we look at the current stage if we look at it with the long stretch of history from your judgment which corner or which stage are we really in at the moment we are not having much time to go all the way into history so only brief answers uh, targeted answers from you sir uh, let's go to mr rastan first from malaysia Now, first, first of all, I think we have to understand that Islam is a religion of peace, a religion of tolerance, mm. a religion of uh, love, uh, and uh, you know the the nearly two billion Muslims in in the world uh, should not be regarded as uh, extremists or fundamentalists or terrorists. So there, there are different levels of beliefs and and understanding of, of and practice of the religion. Now, uh, yes, there have been turmoil within uh, the, the Islamic community, within the Islamic civilization over the, over the years, but uh, I wouldn't say that Islam is in crisis just because uh, you have uh, a few thousand people behaving in a very un-Islamic, and for that, for that matter, in mm. a very uncivilized way by any standards, whether, whether it is, it is uh, uh, standards of Islam or Christianity or Buddhism or, or any other religion. Mm. But then the question is, uh, Mr. Rastam, what can the Muslim community do yes. on your own in order to face up with these kind of crises, even though small and yet it has influenced the overall image and reputation of the overall community. And how can your Muslim community yourself be able to pick up the spirit once again and also, in a way, be respected yes. elsewhere, all over the world, once again? Uh, Mr. Rastam, from you very briefly, sir. Now, uh, of course, uh there is no doubt that economic development uh, is uh, important. Uh, economic development, social development, education is very important. Now, if, the, if there are acts of extremism and terrorism, of course, these have to be dealt with in accordance with the law. 
uh, whether it's domestic law or international law, mm. uh, those people who have committed uh, uh, heinous acts of uh, terrorism or, or crimes against humanity should be dealt with in accordance with, with, with the law. But, uh, you know, uh, the point is there are <laughs> more than a billion Muslims That's who are right. carrying out their their life as 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 uh, loyal citizens of whichever country that they are living mm. in. Some unfortunately have uh, become refugees, and uh, to say that uh, refugees equals jihadists or terrorists, I think is is most unfair.